Welcome to the NLD Referee Society training session on game management delivered as part of the pre-season training for 2019-2020. This video is presented by Mike Mulroy, the Society Training Officer with all credits for video content due to the original broadcaster Sky and BT Sport, even where these are via a third party. So when we look at game management, we're looking at the referee as a whole to make sure that what we do on the pitch reflects the core values of the game, our cell procedure of safety, enjoyment, learning and laws, uh, and, and also to make sure that the teams that are out there, the 30 players, get the game that they deserve. And there's an awful lot of things that, that come into game management, and we're going to look at a few of them here today. I'm going to look at how we play advantage and where we would do this uh, and we are going to talk about the different levels within the community game and league structures to make sure that this is uh, geared to your particular experience of rugby. We look at the behaviours of the teams, the values of the game that we love so much, flashpoints that can occur within the game. A big one is cause and effect and are we actually treating the right things and are we looking at the right issues rather than the wrong one. How to spot when the temperature of a game is rising and when there are any issues that are coming up within the game. And also um, that wonderful one of players appealing. And if we put all these together, we end up with a hopefully successful referee. So let's have a look at uh, the team behaviour first. Research helps us to understand the behaviour of the teams that we're about to referee. So where possible, it's really important that you research before a game the teams that you're going to be doing uh, next. Ask yourself, is there any history between the teams? Are they local to each other? Could there be potential flashpoints such as England, Scotland? Are any players returning from uh, a suspension due to foul play? Uh, and have you have you refereed this team before? What are they like? Are they quite a friendly bunch? Are they quite aggressive, quite uh, dominant up front? Do they have really fast backs? So do your homework. Do you have any experience of them already? Uh, and more importantly, have you written down your experiences? Every good referee should do the plan, do, review system. So we plan for a game, we do the game and we review the game. And successful referees and good referees will often have a notebook and they will make some particular uh, notes, maybe some diagrams uh, on their game that they have done uh, with uh, the, the, the teams before and they can refer back to those so we know that particularly they are strong up front or they have a tight head who is a, a particular problem or a, a weak loose head in the scrummage. Um, if you don't have any re experience of them why don't you talk to the referee that did them last time? Find out if there were any patterns of behaviour, were there any issues throughout the game what he felt um, and where are their strengths and weaknesses. Now if you can uh, and depending on your level you might be able to watch videos of uh, past performances but a good place to start is always on the club website uh, to see if there are any match reports there and if there are go through them see what they say try and get a general feel for the pattern of the game is it uh, a lot of tries to, to not very many the week before did they give away an awful lot of penalties does that uh, suggest that they gave away penalties at the breakdown or were they foul play penalties were there any yellow cards and, and you can build up a picture of what you expect now we're not expecting this process to prejudice the 80 minutes that you referee and, and that always has to be a standalone but sometimes forewarned is forearmed and we'd we'd encourage you to do this homework to see what's coming up in front of you uh, and to be as prepared as you possibly can be you know another thing is what's uh, what's riding on the game is it first game of the season is it mid-season are we coming up to the end of the season and they're fighting for relegation or fighting to stave off relegation or fighting for a promotion place is it a cup game all of this preparation is your responsibility and it is a key factor in your success as the match official so all of those things are items that you can look at in the uh, in the week running up to the game for example but you can do a little bit more research as well 
So have a look at when you get there. Listen to the teams that during the warm up. Is there any bad feeling, any bad blood between them? Clearly, is one team more aggressive in the way that they go through their drills? Um, is one team significantly more or less skillful than the other? Is that going to cause you a problem? Um, how does the team react to decisions? Uh, how can you work with the captain on the day as well? And is he relaying the messages to the team? So your preparation really, as you can see there, doesn't stop. Um, before the game, you're constantly reviewing this information that you've got to see whether this is still the perception that you had beforehand and you should adapt accordingly. So with all that in mind, there we can do as much preparation as we like and we can have a good idea of what to expect, but things don't always go the way we expect them to. So we do have to um, recognize when things are changing during the game. Um, if we come back to this, um, So we're going to have a look now at a video. We'll see it twice. We'll come to some of the things that went on after we see it the first time uh, and then we'll uh, we'll look back through it again. So there's a number of issues here. See how many you can spot. Loves the physical stuff, Andrew Hoare, Aaron Smith, Croswell, quick hands. Brings it up for Corky, who's uh, popped up out of here on the left wing side, even though he's wearing 14. But Jose Diaz going way out onto the right wing side. Williams and Crosswell. And they're going to carry on their little go. And uh, the ball in the meantime is cleared. And two little games going on here. We'll concentrate where the ball is. And half the players are playing rugby. The rest of them are not at this point. And... Now the whistle goes and they can sort some other things out. And that quite, could have got quite easily <coughs> been the Highlanders' best opportunity, to be fair. Half of the Chiefs' defence are in a scuffle. And we'll see Sonny Bull Williams and Johnny Howard took a little bit of exception to something that was going on. I, I would actually like to see that, but not here. Not hey, in this hey, game. Hey. Well, he's Craig. very upset here. So he, got take, he got Craig, taken out in this boat. boat. Uh, that where the ruck was, he was nowhere near it, and Croswell came James, through, he took him out, he took exception to it. Yeah, no, 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 you just take your boy and I'll get him to take it. Where you go, where you go, where you go? Don't, don't we don't need it, we don't need it. Excuse me, excuse me, can you just take him away from me please, thank you. I don't know what it is about this stadium. Let's see if we can find this uh, shoulder charge. Well, you see that every week, don't you? Anyway, the upshot of it all is. So, how many there did you spot? So, the first thing was, of course, uh, the late uh, no arms hit on, uh, at the beginning on the blue five. That didn't really seem to ignite things too much, but it would might have been a good time then to actually deal with it because clearly this is a tense game. Uh, as as you can see, look at the rooks, look at how everybody is flying into the rooks. Um, they're off their feet. Uh, they're coming through the side. Um, so black tackler never moves away at the next one. Blue 8 comes in at the side of the rook. Then you get suddenly Bill Williams wearing 12 black. He does a no-arms tackle to start with. And then the judo throw. And the referee plays on for a full 26 seconds before stopping the game. And all the way through this, there's seemingly no assistant referee input. Now, that temperature rose really quickly. And, and clearly, you'll when we watch it again, I want you to look at what might have sparked um, the players to retaliate, how we as match officials could have taken a little bit more, more control of that. So have a look at it again now. Loves the physical stuff, Andrew Hoare, Aaron Smith, Croswell, quick hands. Brings it up for Corky, who's uh, popped up out of here on the left wing side, even though he's wearing 14. But Jose Diaz going way out onto the right wing side. 
Williams and Crosswell. And they've got to carry on now, little go. And uh, the ball in the meantime is clear. And two little games going on here. We'll concentrate where the ball is. And half the players are playing rugby, the rest of them are not at this point. And now the whistle goes and they can sort some other things out. And that quite, could have quite easily have been the Highlanders' best opportunity, to be fair. Half of the Chiefs' defence are in a scuffle. And we'll see Sonny Bull Williams and Joe Howard took a little bit of exception to something that was going on. I, I would actually like to see that, but not here. Not hey, in this hey, game. Hey, hey. Well, he's Craig. very upset here. So he, got take, he got Craig. taken out in this boat. Out, out where the ruck was, he was nowhere near it. And Croswell came James, through. He took him out. He took exception to it. Yeah. No, no, no. You just take your boat and I'll get him to take it. Where you go? Where you go? Where you go? Where you go? Don't, we don't need it. We don't need it. Sonny! Sonny, I'm back here. Excuse me. Excuse me. Can you just take him away from me, please? Thank you. I don't know what it is about this stadium. Let's see if we can find this uh, shoulder charge. Well, you see that every week, don't you? Anyway, the upshot of it all is... So, at one point, you do actually see the black players appealing uh, at the breakdown and the blue players actually challenging pointing directly to the AR and challenging him to to make that decision we'll come on to that a little bit later on um, now there were a few opportunities there um, for the so we talk about this rising temperature uh, well, let's have a look at how we spot if you think of it very much like a pressure cooker, rather than um, the water boiling away and the steam escaping in a normal saucepan, the lid is on and the temperature rises. It get the, the, the pressure inside gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's what we might call a bit of niggle. Uh, and as referees, we need to be able to spot that. We need to recognise when the temperature is rising as the referee failed to in that uh, uh, in that last clip. Um, now, we talked before about a player feeling particularly aggrieved uh, by a decision or a non-decision. And I think that's fair to say that in that clip we've just seen, that's probably where some of that started. If the referee had dealt with that harshly, we would have never got to that point. And it certainly wouldn't have exploded and, and boiled over. So when those tempers start to flare and the niggle begins to grow, we have to get a grip on it as, as referees. Otherwise, we're going to struggle as that referee there. So let's have a look at another video. Thank you. The temperatures are Jonathan Captain Keely has building. a flag out as well. Which Steve Walsh will surely come back to. Seems that it should stoop to this. A busy evening for the sighting commissioner, sadly. So uh, a previous scuffle went unpunished in this game um, and the, there was a good AR input. The flag was in and uh, he was clearly communicating to the ref, but the ref was too slow to react. There was also, once that flag had come in, there was uh, at the rook, there was a player move by the header, uh, as we would call it, uh, uh, neck roll. Um, and that escalated really, really quickly. Now, during the game, if the referee had actually dealt with the the issues that had been coming up and the way that the previous scuffle had gone perhaps he would have avoided the issues here so we always have to look at cause and effect 
If we'd have dealt with the cause, which was the previous scuffle where a player felt aggrieved that the referee did nothing, the effect would have been that we might have managed it better and that uh, the second scuffle, which escalated, that we saw in the video, uh, might never have happened. Uh, and we just need to know that we're doing um, the right thing. So what caused this scuffle and who would you penalise in this situation? Up on the fringe, oh, Owen Farrell responded to something, and the Barbarians player ended up on the deck. It's already hot enough out there, and now it is boiling over. Well, it's combust. So, did you see what happened there? Let's have a look again. So, as you can see there, players will take matters into their own hands. Make sure you are aware of the context of what's going on. And then ask yourself what started it and why. Now, there are many, many occasions when you can't see what started it, particularly when you're the only pair of eyes on a rugby pitch. And we understand that. Um, but you, you do need to be more aware. You need to open your vision a little bit more. You need to not just watch the ball, but watch the players. Because clearly Farrell is in the wrong to start with. And rather than just pushing uh, Farrell back, Brits then takes a swing at him um, to try and knock his arm off. It's a very poor one to knock the arm off and it does catch him around the head, which is what uh, led to, uh, to Farrell throwing him on the floor. And then again, it escalated incredibly quickly. So we must be very, very aware. And you see this um, quite often in sevens as well. There'll be just a little tug of a shirt. And then at the next breakdown, somebody will come flying in just to get him back or you'll see a push. Um, and we, we have to be aware. We, have, we don't just need to react to the things that are the massively obvious. We need to understand what's causing them and to be visually aware that these things are going on and we have to make sure that we spot them and when they do have an impact as it clearly it did in this case that we deal with that as well so have a look at uh, a couple more examples and Cowan oh it's charged by Borta and Cowan holds them back too and gets back and recovers nicely so have a look at Line that out again. throws to one to gain possession. Ooh. Did you see it the first oh. time round? He was held back. Was back. He's bolted it. Boy, oh, that is not a good look. Uh, I've got a good question. Players. Uh, and that went on throughout that uh, that game, actually. Um, there was those sort of bits of niggle quite uh, quite a lot in the game. And, and the, the black players might be well within their rights to stand up and appeal to a, a match official and to challenge them to deal with behaviour like that. So particularly if you're on your own, you must have eyes everywhere and keep your scan going across the field to make sure that we're not just watching the ball, but when the ball is in hand and in space, we're having a quick look around to make sure that things aren't happening off the ball. So we also talk about flashpoints. Um, so what are they? Why do they occur? Well, particularly there are three areas that create problems. Uh, foul play, uh, issues between players and the referee's decisions or in some cases the lack of them. And these can cause the flashpoints that create those scuffles or those fights. You must ask yourself now, what is your responsibility uh, in managing flashpoints and hopefully preventing them as well? So if we look at uh, the first one, um, foul play, it's generally a player reaction to something dangerous, to provocation or to perceived referee inaction. So how do you manage that? If you do a quick reaction, you'll often hear players saying, relax, the ref's got it. The ref has seen it. 
leave it, he's dealing with it. And that reaction from captains and other players is key for us to keep a lid on things that can escalate very, very quickly. So if we have that big scan, if we're just in and then step out, open our vision, see the bigger picture a little bit, we might be able to spot that uh, potential foul play or the, the minor foul play before it blows up into a, an escalated situation. Make sure that we deal with things firmly and fairly and that the sanctions that we impose reflect the severity of what's gone on. You know, three or four times uh, the same player, let's say Farrell in the situation that we saw, is holding on at a ruck. It's certainly time for a penalty, even if there has been no response from the, uh, the other side. Uh, and, you know, even in that case that we saw there, particularly with the, the benefit of the TMO review, um, you would quite be within your rights if you had to get rid of both of them. Make sure that we make the correct decisions, because if we don't, then players will often take the law into their own hands. And this particularly occurs if we pick the wrong player, uh, we penalise or we yellow card the wrong player as well. And, and players will feel aggrieved. And all of this means that we must, as match officials, be in the right place to see things and not allow the temperature to rise without us keeping our lid on it. So ask yourself sometimes, has there been any issue between players or teams before? You know, good practice maybe to ask the captains or the coaches beforehand. Uh, how did you get on last time you two played? Uh, any issues that I should be aware of? Little questions like that um, will help you in the way that you prepare and the way that you view the game that's coming in front of you. Has there ever been an issue during the game? Has uh, Was that uh, 12 given his opposite number a, a, a really hard tackle? Uh, were, were they holding heads down as they get up? And we often see that is just pushing a player down as, as they're getting up. And if you see that, and you should be seeing that, we need to just run past as we're doing it, or as we run past that player next time, pack that in. I don't want to see you pushing players down. He'll know you're, you're aware of it. He'll know that you're spotting it and that you're looking for it more importantly. And then as I say, that opposite number niggle, the nines at the, at the tunnel, at the scrum, giving each other a push and a shove. Well, just move them away. Stand between the two. Take that niggle away. Take that flash point away from uh, the team and you will be able to mitigate some of this as well. And then obviously, Look, the referee has a, a big part to play in any rugby match. So things that we can do, if it's a big hit, that borderline, oh, that it was tough, but it was just about legal. Did I explain it well? So sometimes you might go past the player going, very close, good hit, but just make sure it doesn't ride up any further. Make sure those arms definitely stay around. It was okay that time, just about. Um, the player knows that you're watching them. Uh, the opposition know that you have spotted something that's close to uh, close to the edge and that you will be keeping an eye on it. And that very often keeps that niggle down as well. If there's any foul play, ask yourself, did I manage it well? Did I again explain it well? And have I got the right sanction for that, that foul play? Um, that frustration with the players, Am I doing my job? Why are they frustrated? Is it because of me? Is it because I'm not there to see it? Did I miss something really bad? If I have missed something, have I apologised for it? I am only human as a match official after all. Um, and, and look, are players taking the law into their own hands? And that often means that I'm missing things as a match official. Could I be in the right place or the wrong place? Am I seeing the right thing? Am I getting there too slow to see what uh, what actually started it? Uh, and, and am I doing the right thing by the game and the players? So we talked before about uh, appealing and we said we cover this. Now, uh, I know we covered this at the beginning of last season, but it's worth just uh, popping in here as a, a bit of a refresher. Um, and it does come down to those uh, core values of the game that we talk about an awful lot. 
So the communication between that the officials and the players is still vital. Uh, and, and that's part of the game that we, we enjoy and love so much. Uh, and particularly that communication uh, with the captain. But just make sure you're saying to the captains in their brief, yeah, communication is fine and through me, please, and through you, but at the right time and in the right way. So certainly not in the penalty uh, and come and talk to me in the right way and we can have that chat. Um, appealing is an immediate or emotive or instinctive reaction which is not sustained. That's what the dictionary says. Um, so that's when um, we use the example before of a, a player comes into Jekyll the ball, gets straight onto the ball for less than a second or a second or so, makes no effort to actually lift it off the floor generally um, and is quickly cleared out and they might be there and nine might be there with their arms up in the air looking for that instant decision even though um, they weren't in a positive position to get it and it's that sort of arms in the air that we need to uh, deal with and, and when we look at appealing um, we'll have a look at this uh, this video uh, and see the differences that uh, over this and a couple of other vid videos this one is low level disruption uh, particularly a breakdown waving hands and uh, and shouting as well uh, and then we talk about game values, you know, patting opponents on the head when they've made the mistake and things like that. Hold on! Hands! 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 So you see the original uh, issue there um, was from a player who was actually nowhere near, wasn't even looking really at the rook, just making a big gesture to uh, to try and catch the referee's eye and say hey look 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 we want a penalty look what he's doing even though the, the rook was still developing and then you after the whistle you saw the uh, uh, the blue and white stripe player get up and, and actually rub the head of the player on the floor um, and there's no need for that they are the times that we would we would deal with it perhaps with the player and just remind them of core values so here the player is verbalizing or gesturing uh, against an action. Uh, just ask them to stop, you know, stop appealing, put your hands down, stop waving at me. On the second occasion, you can either stop the game or you can wait until downtime. I'd say on the second occasion, it's probably best to wait until downtime, uh, particularly in the community game uh, and lower level league games. Um, speak with the player and the captain. Just go time off um, and uh, bring them both over. Captain, look, this player, I've asked him already to stop or I've asked your team to stop waving their arms about and then appealing at every breakdown. I'm now asking you formally to make sure it stops. Uh, if it carries on, I will have to increase sanctions. And on the third time, then we stop the game again and we we uh, we penalise. It's it's repeated pressure. You must sanction it. And if it continues, then we raise our sanctions accordingly. So in this one, you'll see a very emotive reaction that's directed at official. So this is not just the appeal. This is the challenge to an official. This is repeated pressure over a short time. And it's that direct challenge for you to make a decision. Um, sometimes it could be verbal. Uh, sometimes it's gesturing, the arms in the air, pointing. Look, he's holding on. Um, and it's aimed directly at the officials. Um, and, and it could be something simple like calling for a penalty try because we're, we're in the red zone. One splat. It's illegal, mate. No, not for me. You said six is illegal. What's the point of Back you go, fella. Scrum, 
So in the first instance, it's incumbent upon us to remind this player of the core values. And even with live play, that assistant referee there can go, player number six, core values, please don't speak to me like that. Uh, core values, please do not challenge me. Um, again, you need to be careful if you are on the sideline. And, and for those of you who are doing training uh, for assistant referee roles, then just be aware of the way we verbalize that and, and, and the volume uh, over the radios. Um, now, if this is serious um, and we, we, we're sort of borderline on this one or it is repeated, this player must be sanctioned. And certainly in this case, he definitely should have been spoken to. Um, certainly more harshly than it was just no not for me but look what happened the player became frustrated at the lack of a decision and then went charging into the ruck um, when there was absolutely no need or oh, the, the failed maul as it actually was um, the absolutely no need he went in there with the shoulders and to be fair both officials should have picked that up that he's running from distance going straight in uh, with force and that should have been dealt with so we should throughout the game as referees match officials be challenging ourselves. a good official will always do so through the game uh, you've got to ask yourself is our behavior um, good enough as well so is the behavior of the uh, the teams or the players a result of them uh, their poor behavior or is it something that I'm missing something I'm not doing as a match official am I in the right place to see what's happening and we come to this very very often in and all of our training sessions is are we in the right place to make the right decision uh, and also have I actually explained things correctly or escalated things the way that they needed to be um, and if we can say, yes, it, I have done all that and I am in the right position and I have done everything that I possibly can, then we must then increase those sanctions or the way we manage the team and the captain in order to prevent from happening. So let's move on to plain advantage. Um, it could be your greatest tool or your worst enemy, depending on the way you want to look at it. So this is what the, um, uh, the law says about advantage. It may be tactical. Um, so the non-offending team can play the ball as they wish, which may be a kick away. It may be territorial, so that players move forward towards the uh, the offending team's goal line uh, or dead ball line, because it could be in goal. It may be a combination of both, but it must be clear and real, an opportunity to gain an advantage not sufficient. So we are the sole judge of fact uh, and law, and we determine when that uh, team has gained an, uh, a sufficient advantage. So we can look at that uh, in a bit more detail uh, and ask ourselves what really is advantage. So first of all, what is the offence? Is it uh, a minor technicality? Is it uh, a serious technical uh, offence that's going to be uh, a penalty rather than a, a scrum? Or is it uh, some minor foul play? Where are we on the pitch? Uh, what's the score at the time? Always useful to have in the back of your mind. What's happened before? Has this type of thing happened before? And do I need to, to make a big show and deal with it more? Do I need now to escalate sanctions? Is, is playing advantage actually worth it here? And also what could happen next? Has the non-offending side got a good uh, field position? Uh, do they have numbers? Are they ready to make a line break? Uh, and all of those sort of things. So that's the, the, the first few things that we've got to talk about. So general guidance, let's look uh, a technical issue, something that may result in a scrum. So what can a team hope to gain from a scrum in, in a game today? Well, probably if your thought process is the same, it's likely to be one or two passes away from the base of the scrum. Uh, but ask yourself, before we award that scrum, how has the scrum been performing if you've got some evidence uh, throughout the game? Are they always uh, under pressure? Are they going backwards at the scrum? Um, because they may not want the scrum. So here we may actually decide that we don't want to, uh, to uh, give the scrum to them because they're just going to lose the ball. Uh, even if they're going backwards and they're under pressure, 
what is going to be the result? They may be 10 meters further back than where the, let's say, a knock on occurred. Um, but if I do go back those 10 uh, meters to, to where the offense was and give them a scrum, are they likely to lose the ball? At the moment, they could still be in position uh, of the ball. So I may just play a bit longer advantage and see what happens, see if they can, they can get the ball away. Now, if this is for foul play, something that would result in a penalty, you've got to ask yourself again the question, what can the non-offending team hope for at the penalty? So one of the things that you need to establish is where it is on the pitch. Um, during your pre-match warm-up, were you observing the kicker? From each side where was he or she kicking from uh, with some degree of success so where are they in the uh, uh, on the pitch how goes their kicker and would a penalty here give them a scoring opportunity if uh, again use patterns if throughout the game so far they have not um, actually kicked for goal they've always kicked for the corner then perhaps playing the advantage here to see what happens is uh, is probably a better option because clearly they they want the tries rather than the uh, the three point penalties um, so when we talk about uh, game management just make sure that you are in the best position possible I know we can't you know, come back to this time and time and time again but it is so crucial to match officials making the right decision making the first decision on what's going on try and anticipate what's coming next and those of you who have been um, uh, on some of our master classes and we've talked about positioning and anticipation will know what I mean and if you haven't been on one of those and you can get to them prior to a, a training session then please make every effort to do so so where's 10 uh, are they looking to pick up and go where are the forwards where's the next pod um, where, where do I need to be so that I'm in the best position to see and to be with play and to see what's happening behind as in at the last uh, last phase but also to uh, to be in the best position to, to go with play without being in the way. So we need to be vigilant and we you need to use the captains uh, uh, quite a lot throughout our game. We need to talk to them. We need to put the monkey on their back for an awful lot of things, uh, which, uh, uh, as you know, if you uh, watch the video on sanctions from the preseason, we talk about putting the monkey on the back quite a lot. We need to spot the trends uh, as they are building up and be aware that temperatures might be rising. In order to mitigate some of those, we're going to deal with foul play quite uh, quite quickly and maybe for, firmly as well. And we need to let the players know that uh, that we are in control of that game. So hopefully this has been some uh, useful insight into how we might manage a game uh, for you. Uh, thank you again for watching. As always, uh, we hope it, uh, it helps your refereeing. And if you do have any questions, please see one of the training team uh, at, a, uh, at a training event or do email us nldreftraining at gmail.com.